bright beauty every student matters hello students now let's talk about hitler's rise to power now before the students we were talking about the nazi ideology right now in nazi ideology you have learned about a lot of points so it was very much similar to the hitler's world view like i told you right so we saw how they did not believe in equality and how this idea of racial hierarchy was imposed here in germany under their or under hitler's rule right so aryans were seen as the top of this ladder and the jews they were seen at the bottom of this ladder and all the other colored people they were who were living in germany they came between these two groups here correct or not yes we also saw how hitler he uh, sorry how hitler he blamed jews for everything that happened here after the first world war right he put this blame on the jews who were the powerful people powerful people as in they had the financial power here in germany right so he believed that these people the jews they looted the uh, money of common people and this is how they became rich and therefore they should be blamed for all the things that happened he was also very much against these ideas that were propagated by the socialists the democrats the marxists and so on right so here till now you have learned about the crisis in germany that happened after the first world war we also understood about the basic nazi thinking the nazi ideology right so that was similar to hitler's view of germany right so here we see that till now there is crisis here in terms of society economy and polity in germany now people again like i have told you earlier they were looking for some alternative option right so this was the time when hitler took the command and he became the ruler of germany he became the leader in germany right and he set up this dictatorship in germany so here in this topic students we are going to talk about hitler's rise to power but let's have a brief background of hitler right so where was he born when was he born and what did he do in his early life or all, all right so he was born in 1889 in austria do not get confused here that he is the dictator of germany but he was born in austria right so be clear here in this fact that he was born in austria in the year 1889 okay now for in his early life he led a life of poverty he was quite poor also do you know students i am going to share an interesting fact here that hitler he had a dream of becoming an artist right but he was not able to or he failed in making his dream come true so therefore what happened in his early age he enrolled in the army when the first world war broke out right and it was during this period that he actively participated in the war and he became a corporal there and he also earned medals for his bravery the best example is the iron cross that he always wore on his uniform now look at this image of hitler here students do you see the iron cross this was the iron cross that he had uh, won in this war here right for his active participation for his bravery that he showed in the first world war right by participating in it so this was about his early life here let's move on and learn more about him now in 1919 he was very much agitated very much furious like all the other german people when the german officials they surrendered and signed this treaty of versailles about which you have learned a lot till now right so he was also very much angry that why did germans they had to surrender right and they all were looking for someone to blame on so some people they are blaming the weimar republic who had to face the brunt of the uh, old empire whatever they had done then we are talking about the jews now here he saw them as the soft target right so
so hitler based on these arguments he justified whatever he did after coming to power here now back to the point here so in 1919 what happened he was very much agitated very much furious so he joined a small group that was known as germans work german workers party yes students now here after some time he subsequently took over the party and renamed it as national socialist german workers party and here we are talking about them as the nazi right so this was the name of the party that was given by hitler now he took over the leadership after some time and since he was very much angry with the humiliated treaty of versailles so he thought that he had to take some action against it now there was a situation of turmoil situation of clashes everywhere during this period after the first world war right in 1923 we see economic crisis in germany then in 1929 we have the great depression that led to unemployment rise in unemployment reduction in industrial production all these points that we have already learnt about right so here we see that after taking over the leadership he is going to make some changes make some radical changes here in germany right so first of all he wanted to mobilize people mobilize the masses in order to gain their support right so in 1923 hitler decided to capture power by taking the control of bavaria and marching to berlin now it was during this period in 1923 when germany was already facing this economic crisis so this time hitler decided that along with his party he is going to take the power he is going to capture the power by taking the control of bavaria and then marching towards berlin that is in germany right but he got arrested and detained okay and during his period in jail during this period that he spent in jail at the age of 35 he wrote an autobiography right so this name the name of this book is mein kampf and in english it means my struggle so the time he spent in jail students he had a lot to introspect he had a lot to think about how he is going to take over the power in germany how he is going to mobilize the masses right how he is going to become a dictator so based on this he wrote an autobiography and in this autobiography he talked about his anger against the marxists democrats socialists all these other groups that were there in germany right students also he talked about the treaty of versailles and how much he was angry he talked about jews and his anger towards them so all his sentiments they were put together in this book that is mein kampf my struggle right he also talked about how he is going to work on this how he is going to become a leader and so on now this was an autobiography this was about his life where he talked about his own struggles as well talking about his sentiments out loud in this book right students now here we see that during this period 1920s till now they had not gained popular support among masses the nazi party they were not quite popular they had few people among them and they were trying to gain power everywhere but they were not quite popular group here right but it was only during this period that is 1929 1930s when the great depression happened that nazism it became a mass movement now why did nazism became a mass movement here now people of germany they are already fed up with the situation that was prevalent there right now they were looking some for some alternate option they were looking for some alternate leader who is going to improve the situation of germany improve the conditions of the german people in which they were living in right so nazism and the whole group under hitler they promised people that they are going to improve the situation they are going to bring about radical changes in germany now this is how they were trying to gain support in germany 
right students therefore people were now listening to hitler now they turned themselves their attention towards hitler what is he saying and how is going to improve the situation this is how he got their attention the mass attention that he was looking for in 1928 nazi it got 2.6% of the votes right so what are we seeing that after the great depression 1929 1930 nazism it became a mass movement right before this it did not gain popular support right so in 1928 they only got 2.6% of the votes in elections but in 1920 we see some increase here nazis they won 107 seats now finally it was in 1932 that it became the largest party with 37% votes okay here from 2.6 can you see the jump in the numbers here uh, in the percentage here it is 37% right so definitely it gained the support of germans during this period right okay now finally what was happening mass mobilization by whom by hitler so he knew that he had to appeal to the sentiments of common people now there was one thing common among uh, the common people as well as the german people not common but german people and hitler this was the anguish the anger that they had towards the treaty of versailles that was signed after the first world war so hitler in order to mobilize the support of german people he played on the bitterness of german people for the defeat in world war 1 Yes he appealed to the german nationalism and won the support of german army yes students firstly what he is doing he understood what people wanted to hear and based on that he made different promises and he wanted to do the uh, sorry undo the injustice that happened in the treaty of versailles undo the injustice it means that try to correct what happened here the damage that happened in germany after the treaty of versailles was signed okay he also appealed to german nationalism very important point here students now when we are talking about german nationalism he knew that it was important to maintain unity so that everyone could work or could support hitler not work but could support hitler he also got the support of german army that made him bit powerful right he and his party promised to carry out radical changes in germany now he wanted to become the leader right he wanted to gain the absolute control in germany therefore he made different promises now students taking the contemporary case of our country india now whenever elections are held in our country we see that different political parties they participate right they are fighting in elections and in their rallies they try to make different promises to common people they try to gain the support of common people through these promises only so here in the year 1932 hitler was doing the same he was appealing to the sentiments of german people he was trying to make different promises in order to bring about radical changes in germany okay now according to him only violence could destroy the enemies yes he and his party they promoted violence a lot being the right wing party here they believe that everyone had to fight for his rights fighting for his rights only through the violence a uh, violence path here right the emblem of nazi party was swastik now let's have a look at this image here this is the image of hitler but here on his uniform you see something yes this is the emblem of nazi party swastik we all know that this is an ancient symbol now historians have discussed a lot 
on why swastik became the emblem of nazi party so swastik here it shows the pride of german nationalism okay and therefore they kept it as the symbol of this party now let's talk about the nazi party so the nazis they greeted each other with hail hitler yes students look at this image again in order to understand the point here so this was the famous nazi salute hail hitler hail hitler the term hail here when we are talking about in german terms it means to ensure victory to who to hitler so this was the famous nazi salute and how was this done so people and the nazi uh, leaders here they used to raise their right hand and they used to hail uh, say hail hitler right so this was the famous nazi salute as you can see small children all the big uh, elders here in fact nazi uh, sorry hitler himself everyone is raising their right hand and giving this nazi salute to who to hitler making him more popular among the german people they also organized themselves as gangs of armed volunteers for the brown shirts so in order to gain control in order to in fact instill this fear among people as well these armed volunteers they were who were popularly known as the brown shirts right since they believed in violence definitely they suppressed they wanted to suppress uh, everyone who spoke against hitler okay they resorted to beating and murdering anti fascists and jews fascism again like nazism it was popular in italy under mussolini okay so here you know that these armed volunteers what was the main aim uh, uh, for them so the main aim here was to beat and murder everyone who was opposing hitler okay so to suppress the opposition here mainly these people were the communist right the socialist the democrats here another important point that we must remember here is that hitler was a powerful orator it means that he had some good oratory skills oratory or orator here it means that he had he was a good public speaker he knew what to say and when to say and he could appeal to the sentiments of common people the german people right we have seen through examples here people after the first world war and after the great depression germany had to face a lot and right now they were looking for an alternate option they were looking for someone who was going to improve their conditions right the pathetic condition that germany was in so here when hitler was making different promises to the german people they were quite happy with the fact and they were now supporting they were happily supporting the nazi ideology people who were against they were against but he was getting uh, ga gaining mass support here right so being a powerful orator he made different promises among them let's have a look at these few promises so he promised to build a strong nation under the injustice of the versailles treaty that we have already talked about restore the dignity of the german people yes these were the things that were promised by hitler to bring uh, to uh, build a strong german nation that was the need of the hour for the common people the german people as well he also promised to increase employment among youths now we all know about the impact of great depression students many workers they were laid off from their jobs in fact the workers who stayed at their work they were paid low apart from that many people many youths they had lost their jobs so there was rise in unemployment in germany so this was a good issue that could be raised by hitler he promised that he would improve the condition of the youths he would educate them and also provide them jobs 
he understood the minds of common people and he spoke accordingly that is why he is a good orator here a powerful orator he also devised a new style of politics right students now as you can see in the image the powerful way the posture here of hitler right showing him as a good orator right now he is very confident about himself he knew what is going in the minds of german people and he used to speak accordingly okay and that is why he was able to gain popular support now you can see students these are since we are talking about hitler being a powerful orator look at these two images these are the studio photograph now while he was preparing for his speeches here he used to pose right in order to gain in order to devise the style of oratory skills that we have been talking about here right so look at these images they show the powerful message here throwing out the powerful message of him being a good orator so look at the expressions of hitler here right definitely he was a good orator no one can deny that fact and that is how he tried to gain the support of common people there now finally in the elections of 1932 paul von hindenburg who was the field marshal and who led the army here the german army here in the first world war he was elected as the president of germany this is the image of hindenburg and hitler meeting the president hindenburg on 30th january 1933 finally hitler was offered the position of chancellor by president hindenburg right to become the leader here to become the chancellor in germany he was offered this position but we see that hitler wanted to acquire absolute control right students now after this we are going to understand how hitler he became the dictator of germany and he established this rule of this government of dictatorship here in germany right after 1932 that is in 1933 when he gained the complete control of germany so this is how he rose to the power this is how he mobilized the mass support here and also nazism it became a mass movement right nazis they also held massive rallies in support of hitler and to instill unity among people we all have learned that emblem of nazi party was swastik so the red banner with swastik here as you can see the supporters the nazi party right the armed volunteers the brown shirts that we have learned about so the nazi party here the brown shirts that we have learned about they were supporting hitler okay by holding a uh, holding massive rallies in support of him now the red banners with the swastik as you can see in the image the nazi salute that we already have learned about hail hitler and the ritualized rounds of applause showed his power these were the elements that showed that hitler is now becoming a popular leader in germany right people were very much amused by hearing his speeches the powerful speeches that hitler used to give in order to instill this uh, anger among people as well that was related to the first world war the common bitterness among them right now coming to the exercise section here students we have a few questions the first question is when was hitler appointed as the chancellor of germany we just have read it right now right the options here are 1932 1933 1934 and 1935 so what would be the correct answer here quite easy option b that is 1933 now again one important point that we might have missed is about führer leader so who was called as führer so people they called hitler as führer the correct answer here is adolf hitler okay he was known as führer describe in detail hitler's rise to power and its effect on effects effect on sorry europe now we are going to learn about this part in later section but i am going to explain it right now only okay so when we are talking about the rise of hitler to power 
here we have to mention all the important points that we have learned so in the beginning we are going to talk about how hitler he joined the party and he renamed the party under his leadership as national socialist german workers party then in 1923 they marched towards berlin bavaria and they wanted to capture berlin but he was arrested at this point of time you have to mention the journey here how he came to the power so he was arrested and detained and it was during this period that hitler he wrote his autobiography that we call it as mein kampf it means my struggle right and in this he talked more about his anger towards the socialists the democrats communists and also his anger towards the treaty of versailles that were signed by them also he talked about jews they were responsible for all these things right so there were a lot of things that we have seen they uh, we uh, saw that hitler talked about in this so in brief you have to mention these points here okay then we see how in the year 1923 economic crisis was going on in germany later on 1929 1930 the great depression <coughs> but it was only in 1920s we saw that this party did not gain major support right but it was only in the great depression that nazism it became a mass movement right you have to mention these points here talk about the data uh, datas that you have learned in 1928 only 2.6% vote then in 1930 we see that they have 107 seats in 1932 Nazi party became the largest party with 37% votes talk about the oratory skills of hitler right so here you have to say how he devised this new style of politics what were the things that he promised to the german people right to make a strong to build a strong german nation we have talked a lot of points there so you have to talk we have to mention about the oratory skills remember students i am talking about the keywords here you have to frame your answer based on what you have learned in this topic here right all the points that i have mentioned in this video okay so talking about the oratory skills here then to undo the injustice from the treaty of versailles improving the conditions of the youth right giving them employment that they had to face after the unemployment that was there after the great depression so all these points we have mentioned there the nazi salute right hail hitler that we have talked about apart from that rounds of applause is all these things showed that he was gaining power in germany he was rising to power in germany right apart from this in 1933 he was appointed as chancellor by president hindenburg so this is how he gained power in germany but what was the effect in europe now after the students you will learn about the foreign policies of hitler once he becomes a dictator he launches his foreign policy in which he is undoing the injustice of treaty of versailles through which he captures the different territories he recaptures not captures he recaptures all these territories such as rhineland he, it was remilitarized we are going to learn about that i'm just giving you a brief idea since the question has been asked here right so the foreign policies that he adopts right that he executes it had a deep impact on europe why because somewhere it led to the second world war hitler himself launches the war against these uh, great countries right so again the allied powers on one side the axis power the central power on the other side they are fighting the war in which germany lost the second world war as well and hitler he died in this war in fact he shot himself in his bunker in the year 1945 so here we are going to learn in great detail about the foreign policies so you can answer that part here as well right that you will learn later on the next question here is how were nazis able to make nazism a mass movement in germany the massive rallies <coughs> talk about that 
टॉक अबाउट रोल ऑफ हिटलर इन दिस हाउ ही वॉज अ गुड ओरेटर द प्रोमिस मेड बाय हिटलर टॉक अबाउट दैट एज वेल I have already dis uh, discussed that in previous question, so I am not going to repeat it here because these are some of the points that we have been talking repeatedly, students. Right? So by now you should remember all these keywords, all these points here. What we have to mention in this question, right? So promises made by Hitler. So it became a mass movement only after this, the Great Depression, right? The brown shirts, the armed volunteers who tried to suppress. the anti fascist and the jews people against whom hitler was always talking about so all these points have to be mentioned here 